all sing loudly. We've given you the words and we can hear you. congregation on the south side is Westwood, great partners and colleagues. We gather with gratitude this morning here on Treaty 6 land. A treaty is an inheritance, a responsibility, and a relationship. May we be good neighbors to one another, good stewards to our planet, and good ancestors to all our children. And so as we begin this special hour together, I invite you to quiet your devices and yourselves so that we can all enjoy the service further. Um, I'd like to, now we have some announcements, and I know I'd like to call on Ruth Marriott for an important announcement. Good morning. I'm Ruth Marriott, and I'm one of the three endowment trustees. Last week, you heard from uh, Jan McMillan. She spoke to the endowment campaign that we're running this month. So I'm the second, um, second one, but I'm not speaking on this today. I'll get to that in a minute. Our third endowment trustee is Marg Roche, whom I can see there. Raise your hand. <laughs> Thank you, Marge. Today, we're going to hear from Dorothy Keeler, and I'm immensely happy that she's going to speak to the endowment. Dorothy, along with her late husband, Bernie, have been very active in supporting UCE and the denomination for many, many years. Mm -hmm. So they've been involved with all kinds of things. And if I think of walking the talk, I think of Dorothy Keeler. So Dorothy, can you talk to us a bit about the endowment? <laughs> Good morning. Uh, I'll get my script. My voice sometimes fails me. It's a, a result of COPD, so uh, don't get it. Stop smoking if you are. Uh, when Bernie and I were first married, no, when we were married, uh, in the 50s, 
it was very traditional to send flowers or casserole to the family of, of friends who were grieving the loss of a, a member of their family. I was not a cook. I never have been a cook. And that was not one. Thank you. Can you hold it? Thank you. Okay. So uh, Bernie and I d developed other ways of uh, responding to that. Eventually, we noticed that they were putting in as a charity of your choice in a, the obituaries, which delighted us because this is our charity of choice. Bernie and I chose to contribute to UCE Endowment Fund for the many friends we made here since 1961 when we first joined. I suspect that the families were rather relieved not to cope with food or flowers they had not already ordered, and many thanked us with a note. We certainly were pleased to be contributing to our church, to the stability of our church. There have been many occasions when UCE's endowment fund has enabled UCE to contribute to being an important influence in our community. And a previous, and a previous home for all of us. Many of you will remember how we leaned on it as we bought this building to replace our old, too small church. Of course, large contributions are always more, more valuable, uh, but I would certainly encourage any of you to follow the way we uh, went, that is, using this church as your charity of choice. Thank you, Dorothy. And good morning. Another good morning. <laughs> is my mic. Yep, mic's on. During this month, we'll have these candles up on the side, and any time during the service, if you would like to light a candle for someone that you would like to remember, either through a donation or just lighting a candle, please feel free to do so. So, like I said, it's not just if you, if you give some money, you get to light a candle. No. If you would like to remember someone, we have the whiteboard to remember, and then you can light a candle as well. However, that being said, we have already had five contributions to our donation, to our endowment campaign. So I'm going to ask Coralie to go and light five of the tall blue candles in memory of or in significance of those five donations that have already come into the endowment campaign. So it could be someone that who, who has died, or you could be thinking of an ancestor that you didn't get to meet. Maybe they died before you were born, but their story perhaps lives on in you. So anytime through the month, please feel free to light a candle of remembrance. I also would like to point out, thank you, Coralie, that next weekend is the regional fall gathering. And information on this and links are in the weekly email. It would be great if a few people signed up and came on with me. And it's recommended that at least two folks from each congregation attend. 
from the CUC website. Join the National Unitarian Universalist community as we share a weekend online exploring the topic, living into covenant. And I think that's really appropriate or apropos for us at this time, as we have just created a new covenant, the first phase of a new covenant. So congregational life, community life is a collective. Being part of a faith community provides us with a place where we practice what it means to be human. That's from Jay, uh, what's his first name, John Luther Adams? James Luther Adams. We will do some deep reflection on the value of covenant, covenant, covenantal relationships and important elements that are part of the community. So on Friday night, the CUC board and staff will host a 90-minute regional, will host 90-minute regional gatherings. And then on Saturday, the whole group will join together and discuss covenant, how we hold ourselves accountable, and how we can return to covenant when our covenant has been broken. And then on Sunday, everyone is invited to attend the national worship service. You can do that at home or you can come in and do it and we'll have a Zoom party here and it'll be on the big screen. After the Zoom party, so, and party is the operative word here, there will be some food, refreshments, festivities, and we will turn our sanctuary into a glorious seasonal wonderland. So please come and help with that. Um, whether you decide to join the regional, the, the, the national service or not, please come and help um, bring all the things down, put the things up. It's going to be really fun. And I'll make sure there's food and um, maybe even some games and stuff. We'll have a party. Should we have a party? Yeah. All right. That's enough of announcements. Heaven's sakes. And so now it's time for our prelude. We leave the mundane behind us as we are, allow ourselves to relax and settle in. Thank you, Gordon. Um, we traditionally in this church light a chalice at the beginning of the service. Um, and today we're going to be also on Remembrance uh, Weekend is lighting uh, appropriately during Remembrance Day and I think the weekend of November 11th to um, be lighting a candle also for our friends in the Ukraine. So I'll call on Corley Karen's to light the chalice and the um, uh, Ukrainian candle as I read these uh, words. In honor of First Steps by Reverend John Taylor. 
We light this chalice in honor of first steps. From beginning, even when the path ahead is unclear, for the courage it takes to trust that the way will reveal itself, that light will come to clarify our vision, that friends will be by our side. May the words, song, stillness, and common breath of this hour remind us that every step of the way is never one we take alone. And now a time for all ages. And who doesn't love having a story read to them? After the fall, How Humpty Dumpty Got Back Up Again by Dan Santat. I bent all the bottoms of the pages so I wouldn't lick my fingers, but I think I'm going to have to do it anyway. My name is Humpty Dumpty. This was my favorite spot, high up on the wall. Now, I know it's an odd place for an egg to hang out, but I loved being close to the birds. There's a little hint. What do eggs turn into? (laughs) Then one day I fell. I'm kind of famous for that part. Folks called it the Great Fall, which sounds a little grand. It was just an accident, but it changed my life. (laughs) Fortunately, all the king's, not the horses, all the king's men, doctors, women, were able to put me together. Well, most of me, there were parts of me that couldn't be fixed with bandages and glue. After the fall, I became afraid of heights. I was so scared that it helped kept me from enjoying some of my favorite things. This book is not cooperating. I walked past the wall every day. And I would think about climbing that ladder again. I really missed the birds and being high above the city. But I could never do it because I knew that accidents can happen. I eventually settled for watching the birds from the ground. It wasn't the same, but it was better than nothing. Then one day, An idea flew by. Looks like a paper airplane to me. This book is not cooperating. There we go. Making planes was harder than I thought. It was easy to get cuts and scratches. But day after day, I kept trying and trying until I got it just right. I don't know about you, I've made my share of paper airplanes. That is some fancy paper airplane. (laughs) He had origami paper, that's right. The plane was perfect and it flew like nothing could stop it. I hadn't felt that happy in a long time. It wasn't the same as being up in the sky with the birds, but it was pretty close, close enough. Uh Uh-oh. Unfortunately, accidents happen. What happened? What happened? Where? Where's the airplane? Where's the paper plane? Ah, (laughs) Jones gets the right answer. (laughs) The plane got stuck up on the wall where Humpty Dumpty used to sit and fell off of. Accidents happen. They always do. 
I almost walked away again. But then I thought about all the time I'd spent working on my plane. It's a very fancy plane. I don't know if I'd want to leave it either. And all the other things I'd missed. I decided I was going to climb up that wall. But the higher I got, the more nervous I felt. I didn't want to admit it, but I was terrified. I didn't look up. I didn't look down. I just kept climbing one step at a time until I was no longer afraid. There's Humpty back up on his wall. Open. Maybe now you won't think of me as that egg who is famous for falling. What's happening to him? Crack, crack. Hopefully you'll remember me as the egg who got back up what I love about this is he matches his airplane <laughs> that he made <laughs> and learned how to fly. And that's our story. I love this story of adversity and having accidents and trying things over and over again and, and embracing change. So. I think that's what we're doing, isn't it, this, through our time together with COVID and everything. And I'll be talking about that a little bit more. But Humpty Dumpty got back up again and learned to fly. And um, thank you, Reverend Rosemary, for that um, lovely story, which was a great gift, which leads into us joining and singing, Life is the Greatest Gift of All, hymn 331 uh, in your hymn books, if you could rise if you're willing and able to sing, Life is the Greatest Gift of All. Our community is entirely self-governing and self-supporting, and one of the privileges of our free church tradition is to provide all of the financial support of our many ministries from among ourselves. Generosity, therefore, is one of the spiritual values we recognize as central to our personal and institutional well-being. Uh, in addition to supporting this church community, we also make a monthly commitment. And uh, well, it's not beyond our walls; it's in our walls this month. Um, and so, I think the uh, uh, UCE endowment fund is what we're going to be uh, supporting through this month. So, for the month of November, we're sharing our abundance with the UCE endowment fund. Oh, isn't it? No, the turkey drive. Oh, is it the turkey drive? Yes. Oh, well, I got mixed up. 
<laughs> what's the buzz? Tell me what's happening. Um, Corley and I are going to go see that this afternoon, so, 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 um, be, uh, so I apologize for that. We are going to be donating um, one half of the contributions this month to the Turkey Drive in Edmonton. Um, so uh, you can use um, those in the sanctuary, they'll be passing around uh, the uh, collection plate and uh, those online. Uh, can check with uh, on the UCE website and sort of welcome all the contra uh, contributions. And um, the uh, offering plates will be brought up to me at the end. So we thank everybody for their generosity and support. Um, and uh, please uh, join us in singing From You I Receive. That was fun. <laughs> Sorry, I, um, I, think I, I think I'm the one that kind of didn't cue that correctly. But uh, the next thing we're going to do is watch a video that came to me in my email. And I just hope you love it as much as I do. Maybe it's too hard to understand Think it's too much 
for us to handle But I promise you that you can Cause you don't need to be a superman Great. Yes. I bet you can't see me. <laughs> oh, there we go. Thank you. So um, that arrived in my inbox, and I said, that's perfect for our monthly theme. Uh, so I follow Empty Hands music, and so I wrote to them, and Nemo Patel wrote back and said, go for it. Show it. Put it on your YouTube channel. Use it as you will. And so um, that was definitely used with permission and the kindness of Empty Hands video. And now we're going to enter into a time of quiet meditation. I'll let you know how the, this is going to go. First, I'm going to help you get grounded, have a bit of an embodied moment. And then I'm going to read a poem by David Wagner called Lost. Some of you may know this poem. Then we're going to have a few moments of silence. It's going to be read again. John will read it. And then we're going to have a little bit of silence. And then Coralie will read it. A little bit of silence. And then we're going to all sing together, Comfort Me. The words will come up on the um, screen behind me. Stay seated for that uh, hymn. You can sing it or not, or just hum along, whatever feels right for you. Do what feels good. So I invite you to join with me in this time of meditation by allowing yourselves to sink into your chair. Perhaps put your feet on the floor or maybe you're lying on the floor in your living room. Let your body go and sink in to whatever it is you're lying on, be it the bed, the couch, the chair, or here. Allow the chair you are in to hold you and envelop you. I invite you to take a moment. Notice what your breath is doing. Is it shallow? Where is it stuck? And then maybe take a couple of deep, long, cleansing breaths. Put your shoulders up to your ears and then let it go. Noticing where we are holding the tension in our bodies, holding that energy. and let it float away. Lost by David Wagner. Stand still. The trees ahead and bushes beside you are not lost. Wherever you are is called here. 
and you must treat it as a powerful stranger, must ask permission to know it and be known. The forest breathes. Listen, it answers. I have made this place around you. If you leave it, you may come back again, saying, here. No two trees are the same to raven. No two branches are the same to wren. If what a tree or a bush does is lost on you, you are truly lost. Stand still. The forest knows where you are. You must let it find you. Stand still. The trees ahead and the bushes beside you are not lost. Wherever you are is called here, and you must treat it as a powerful stranger, must ask permission to know it and be known. The forest breathes. Listen. It answers. I have made this place around you. If you leave it, you may come back again, saying, here. No two trees are the same to raven. No two branches are the same to wren. If what a tree or a bush does is lost on you, you are surely lost. Stand still. The forest knows where you are. You must let it find you. Stand still. The trees ahead and the bushes beside you are not lost. Wherever you are is called here. And you must treat it as a powerful stranger, must ask permission to know it and be known. The forest breathes. Listen. It answers. I have made this place around you. If you leave it, you may come back again, saying, here. No two trees are the same to raven. No two branches are the same to wren. If what a tree or a bush does is lost on you, you are surely lost. Stand still. The forest knows where you are. You must let it find you.
to that time in our service where we light candles of joy and concern. There are two stations, plus if you choose, would like to, you can also light a candle of remembrance for someone that has died that you love or cherish or remember with fondness or wish you had known. We do this to create community, to help us know that we have joys, we have concerns, we have cares, we have worries. And sometimes just lighting a candle can make those burdens just a little lighter and that joy a little greater. I invite you now to light a candle of joy or concern or both. This reading is called In Between by Cage Walker. In between, In between liminal, liminal that, that space, space where, where we, we wait, wait. Between, between moments, moments events, events, results, results action, action, no action. No action. To, stand to stand on the threshold, threshold waiting for something to end, end. And, something and something new to arrive, arrive a pause in the rumble of time. Of time. Awareness, awareness claims, claims us, alert, alert a, shadow a shadow of something different. In between, in between invitation, invitation and acceptance, in between, in between symptom and diagnosis, 
in between, in between sent, sent and receipt of inquiry, of inquiry and question, in between, in between love, love given and love, and love received. received. Liminality, a letting, a letting go, go entering, entering into, into confusion, confusion, ambiguity, and disorientation. disorientation. A ritual, a ritual begun, begun, pause, look, look back, back at what, what once, once was, was. Look, look forward, forward into what, what becomes. becomes. Identity, Identity sheds, sheds a layer, reaches, reaches into something uncomfortable to wear. In between, in between lighting, lighting up the match and, and kindling, kindling of the oil. oil. In, between in between choosing of text and reading, and reading of words. words. In, between in between voices and notes, and notes carried, carried through the air into ears, ears to hear. To hear. In, in between, between creation, creation thrust ever, ever forward. forward. Social, Social hierarchies, hierarchies may, may disassemble and structure and fall. Communities may revolt or tempt trust. trust. Tradition, Tradition may falter or creativity, creativity crashes, crashes forward. forward. Leaders, Leaders may step down or take charge. charge. The people, people may choose or refuse. Or refuse. In, between, In between, storm, storm predicted, the horizon, the horizon beacons. beacons. In between, In between the theology, theology of process, process reminds us to step, step back. In between, in between where, where minutia and galaxies intermingle, intermingle with microbes, microbes and, and mysteries. In between, in between liminal, liminal, that spare, spare space, space, space where, where we, we wait. wait. Look, look, listen, listen feel, feel, breathe. breathe. Thank you, Jeff, for reading this morning. That was In Between by Kate Walker. We are in liminal time, right here, right now. If you are lost, stand still. The forest knows where you are. I don't know about you, but I found comfort and courage in those meditation words by David Wagoner. Things to me, and perhaps to you as well, seem to be moving so quickly. I just want to stop and let the forest find me. And I'm kind of tired of living in liminal time, just saying. Shall we take stock of where we are? Not so long ago, your minister of 22 years retired, with a few months of sabbatical, I think almost half a year, and then a summer. You were supposed, then you were supposed to get a two-year interim while you sorted things out and entered search. Oh, COVID. Messed that up. Messed everything up and everyone up, pivoting to online services without a minister in place. I can't even imagine how challenging that was. I know it was challenging because I was serving a congregation and I too had to pivot and go online with everything. It was hard. Then you hired an interim and in some ways that worked and in some ways, that didn't. Then you hired another minister, me. And I have been with you for about a year and a half, almost. Things are beginning to settle. However, you're having to get used to me. I'm not like Reverend Brian. I'm not like Reverend Leanne. And I'm making some changes. The services. The committees, events, staffing, mission, vision, covenant, everything changes when you get a new minister. Even if the new minister tries really hard not to make too many changes too quickly. Whew. And now, more changes afoot. You have voted on creating a search committee to explore where and what and with whom you would like to move forward in this 
our shared ministry, your ministry, more changes. Even if we want change, even if it's positive change, change is difficult and it's stressful. When will things just settle down and we can go back to normal? And can someone please tell me what normal is besides a setting on our clothes dryers? No one knows. And normal is actually a dangerous thing for a congregation, for if we desire to go back to normal, we are missing the value and gift of this liminal time we are in. Have you ever heard of change theory? Yeah? Our theory of change is a methodology or a criteria for planning participation, adaptive management, this sounds tough, and evaluation that is used in companies, philanthropy, not-for-profit, not for international development, research, and government sectors to promote social change. Theory of change defines long-term goals and then maps backward to identify necessary preconditions. That was from Wikipedia, obviously not my words. Some of them I had to look up. No, I didn't, but anyway. But it sounds easy, right? Well, not so fast. As soon as any steps are taken, there are forces and voices that try to push back. I liked it the way it was. If, it, if we grow in any way, then it won't feel the same. And why do we need a, you fill in the blank, anyway. And I certainly don't want to pay for that. There is that messy, messy middle part where everything falls apart or turns into goo, like a caterpillar during metamorphosis. That's where it gets scary, like Humpty, in the messy, messy middle. It's where we lose our footing, shape, and texture. Remember those Israelites who cried out to be saved from bondage? Those were the same Israelites who, as the story goes, after being in the messy middle part, cried out to be returned to Egypt, for at least there they had some food and shelter. The story of the Israelites can be used as a metaphor for change. We don't like our situation, it's uncomfortable, we're in bondage of some kind or another and we need out. We wander around for 40 minutes or 40 days or 40 nights or 40 years and finally figure it out, or not. And sometimes there's even a change in leadership. Carrying the metaphor a little further, in the messy middle, we get hungry, tired, disillusioned, forlorn, anxious, all the yucky stuff. And then, if we're lucky, all that trial and error begins to show us the way. Sometimes in my life, when I've been going through change, the path was decided by the doors and windows that slammed shut or refused to open. So it is with trial and error, discovering what works and what doesn't, being brave when we're in the messy middle, and relying on each other that we get through the change process. And what about that, all that pressure to stay the same? Unfortunately, nothing can stay the same. We are either shrinking or expanding in our personal lives, in our work, or in our congregational life. How many here have experienced some significant change in their lives? Quite a few of you. How about online? Is there anybody there? You could maybe put something in the chat, like, are you kidding me? <laughs> How did you cope? What did you do? to get through it. Anybody? Not rhetorical. 
leaned on my friends and family, learned when it was important to reach out. What else? Financial. Getting our finances in order. Is that what you mean, Lyndon? Yep. In. A long-range goal. So kind of looking ahead. And then, like change theory, kind of backing it up. Here's where I want to be. I'm better, if I want to actually go to school, I better apply. <laughs> or get the prerequisites under my belt or something like that. Or... If I want to live in a less cluttered environment, I better declutter. Right? One and um, change is a daily activity, says Dosha. One step in front of the other from Beth. Yes, one step in front of the other. Self care. Self -care. There it is. Yeah. Anything else popping in, wanting to fly out of someone's mouth? Oh, we're gone. They develop spiritual practices. Changing paradigms. I, I like that. Thank you. Okay, well, I heard some great suggestions. Change theory, and there are many iterations of change theory, but the one I read suggests that we look to where we want to go. Somebody mentioned that. Then plot backwards to where we are. It's not a bad idea. However, it doesn't take into all account all the discomfort change creates and the very real pushback that happens. So I'm going to kind of repeat. I'm, I came up with some of the same things you guys did. So here's my list. When I'm going through change, if I stay grounded and maintain some spiritual practices, I can usually get through after I scurry around a little bit like an Israelite in the desert. Usually takes me a while to recognize that I'm scurrying, and then I remember, oh yeah. If I put, in, if I put back into place a gratitude practice, some meditation, stop just walking by my piano and sit down and actually play a little bit, engage in some movement, eat some nutritious food, and get some time in the forest. I'll do better. I don't have to do all of those things. Just some of the things, some of the time. And then I begin to recognize who I actually am again. Oh, and as a verbal processor, I have to find a willing ear to let me hear myself say all the things, because I can't really think about anything until I say it. Usually I pay somebody for that, because it's pretty boring. <laughs> <laughs> then I can find some relief, and the messy middle begins to give way to something new that I wanted, or perhaps something I didn't even know that I needed. So for us as human beings, change is difficult, and we need to find ways to cope. For us as congregants, and part of this congregation, we are trying to build and sustain something that is important. We need to be here as a shining beacon of hope, caring and inclusion for people that, like all of us, need a place to be and to be accepted just as they are. We need to be here to fight for values of equality, equity, compassion, and dignity. We need to be here to help each other be the best people we can be, to learn to live in covenant, and to learn how to get back into covenant when we have messed up. We need to be here so that when someone has a broken heart or are overwhelmed or have lost hope, then here they can find solace, support, care, and comfort in our midst. We need to be here because we all need community. And not just any community, but a community where we can be safe from harassment and despair. 
Now that we know that nothing stays the same, knowing that the only thing that doesn't change is change itself, let's dig in to what we need to do to make sure we cope well with all this change we are in. And we want to make sure that we will emerge stronger and even more beautiful. Well, how do we do that? So we need to have strong structures in place. Our governance implementation team continues wor to work hard at that. We need to have activities and events that bring people together to have fun and promote our values into the world. Our Samhain event was just such an event and next Sunday you have a chance to do another activity in, with us. We need to have opportunities for spiritual and personal growth. Our small group ministry and working on teams and committees helps with that, as does coming to our Sunday services, singing with Coriolis, being in the walking group, the book club, simply engaging with others. We still have some gaps. We still need some folks. We need some folks to help with the membership team. We need a team to develop a system of pastoral care for the congregation. And we need a new system of creating social get-togethers that include food, like our soup Sundays. Here's the plug. Let me know if you want to do any of that. We are building from the ground up. We're digging in to discover how we can dig ourselves out and carry on in a new way that helps us remember and honor our past. But we will meet the needs of the present and the future along our way. I think we have the ability to do great things together. I've said that many times and I'm saying it again and I'll say it again in the future. Sometimes a great thing is simply lending a listening ear giving someone a ride, baking or cooking, or just showing up. As my colleague Reverend Teresa Soto says, all of us need all of us to make it. So let's work together to make our lives better, make this congregation thrive, and to bring justice into the world. After all, as Cornell West says, justice is what love looks like in public. So may it be. Amen. Let's take about 30 seconds to reflect and digest, then Gordon will lead us into singing our closing hymn. We are building a new way. Hymn number 1017.
uh, we will extinguish the uh, flame, and I'll call on uh, Corley to extinguish the flame, the chalice, and the uh, uh, Ukrainian candle, uh, and just share some words. May you be changed by uh, Emily Richards. And I will change and make sure to double check the slides next time. <laughs> May you leave this time together changed. May the promises you have made to yourself about who you want to be feel closer to the reality of who you are right now. May you share that feeling of transformation wherever you go. May it spread into every word, deed, thought, and interaction until we are all changed and changing, transformed, and transforming together, becoming our better self. I would like to thank everyone that participated in and contributed to this service this morning. As you can see, there's a little bit. How about here? Okay. I would like to thank everyone who contributed to this service, participated in, and who came either online or in person here, who shared who had ideas, who were moved. We're in this together. As Soon as I finish the benediction, I'm gonna take off and join folks online as quickly as I can. So you'll just see me take off and uh, you won't see me after the service. But I have these words of benediction by Alina Westbrook. Go in hope. For the universe is long, and together we can bend it toward justice. Go in courage, for together we have the strength to confront injustice in our daily lives and the larger world. And go in love, because a holy and generous love is both the reason and the means by which we transform the world. So go in peace, my gentle people. Go in peace. And let us rise and sing, carry the flame, facing one another as you wish.